Since 1980, the Upper Valley Haven has welcomed all who come through their doors with dignity, respect, and a smile. At White River Toyota, our 60 employees are proud to share this timely film. If the stories you're about to see move you, please share this video with others. And then it all crashed. Because of just multiple events crashing on top of me and I just couldn't get up fast. I don't get along with my parents. But like I've been on the, living on my own pretty much since I was like 14. But yeah, I stuttered a lot worse back then. You know, I got picked on a lot, uh, a lot. But my uh, dad, he didn't really like, 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 like me that much, so. I mean, I've made the wrong choices. I was spending, uh, you know, lots of time getting high and getting drunk, and like I said, now I've finally gotten to getting my act straight, so. to be a musician and write songs and perform them and I wanted people to like know how it feels and like if they can relate to it. We have about 49 percent uh, of our students living in poverty. Um, another 15 percent of those students are homeless. It's a, an illness away, it's a job away. What we're finding now is that we have middle class folks who, because of the toughest recession in American history, become homeless. He said that he was going to have someone come and take all our stuff, and she took her stuff to school in a backpack. The bottom end of anybody's continuum is being homeless because it's where we anchor. People are handed s such difficult things. Losing your way doesn't discriminate. And it's very hard to get out of that cycle. You know, if you just keep repeating your past, then you're not going to move ahead. I mean, you can, you, 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 you can affect your own fate. Because I never thought I'd be in this position. I think it was an issue of pride. And asking for help was a pretty big step. There's a resilience that, thank goodness humans have. I live with my mom named Crystal and my dad Anthony and Alexa and Mariana. We've been through a lot of hardships, but we've grown together as a family. They were trying as hard as they could to work, keep a job, and um, pay an exorbitant rent. Tony got laid off. They sold the business to somebody else, so I didn't have a job anymore either. Their love was constantly being tested. We were in the process of losing our apartment. The landlord sold the house. We had nowhere to go, like nowhere. I, we didn't have any money at the time to get a place. He knocked on the door and he said that he was gonna have someone come and take all our stuff. And she took her stuff to school in a backpack so that it would she wouldn't lose it. It was hard. Sometimes it lasts in love. Sometimes it hurts instead. People think of homeless people, they think of Boston, New York, people that actually live under the interstate bridges. But you know, the way the economy was, um, a lot of people had a home and lost it. But there's a lot more of that population here than people realize. We are seeing more situational poverty. Middle class, achievement-oriented people 
who have hit bumps in their life due to the overall economy of the country. Many of the families are hardworking people, but they're underemployed. Um, it's not that they're not willing to work, it's been challenging for them to find employment. There were people hidden in plain sight in our community. I was worried about the kids, you know, and worried about them telling their friends that they live at a homeless shelter. Like, I was really nervous that we would be staying there, and I was start, and I was. After I went there, I got to know other people that went through everything, like, that might have even went through harder things than me. We're not the only people that are feeling that way. It wasn't ex at all what I thought it was. It was so different. It was much nicer than I imagined. They gave us a room and they were, like, to make us feel, like, all comfortable and stuff. They would sign us up, like me, up for, like, tons of camps. And Alana got to go to a summer camp, horseback riding lessons. They gave us tickets to movies. Alana and Alexa are two of the just sweetest kids. They're just, you know, amazing kids. They engage everyone around them. I, I remember Alexa just being the smiliest, happiest kid no matter what. I'm glad that little family's intact. <laughs> Those little girls, boy, did they, they, love their parents. I could see that. That love was definitely there. Jody was our caseworker and she was a pretty amazing woman. It wasn't just a job to her. She really cared about people. I'm there and I want them to help themselves. One of my goals was to become an LNA and one of my other goals was to have a stable apartment and living situation and both of those goals I met. And so if somebody else were in your situation, what would you say to them? It, it might be hard for your first time doing, like, having to do this, but it's going to get you higher in life and you probably will see, like, a bright future. The idea of the Haven started out of a Bible study. They were feeling called to start a homeless shelter. So they got together with other churches, all volunteer at first, and then it just grew and grew. I had prayed that I'd have an opportunity uh, at some point in my life to uh, work with the homeless. Mary is so dedicated to the Upper Valley Haven and has been for 30 years. When I arrive at the Haven in the morning, there's always activity and motion and life going on. We have some of the best shelters anywhere in the country because Vermonters believe in taking care of each other. We're here to welcome everyone who comes through the door with dignity and respect. It is a place of miracles. Our Resources come through the door, they're all donated to us, but we give it all away for free. They come in and they register and they come once a month for about a week's worth of food. Once a year, the Haven invites families from around the area to come in on a Saturday for Thanksgiving. I have been unemployed for a couple of months and I have a family of nine, so um, this is helping my family out a great deal. There is such a culture of expectation in our community. Holidays are hugely about food. They are about giving to each other. My name is Joe Hensel. I'm married to the lovely Britta. So today is our Thanksgiving meal. We're making pumpkin pies, apple pies, sweet potatoes, the turkey stuffing. The satisfaction of seeing people enjoy the food, that's just the, as they say, if I could use a cooking metaphor, the icing on the cake.
clothing room here that you see is set up similar to a little store and folks are welcome to come in and shop and find whatever they need for their family and, and take it home with them. All my clothes I got from the Haven that I wear now. I'm a stylish guy, you know. You could always give money to bail someone out of a situation, but really giving them tools is the best way to solve the problem. So I took a class at the Haven called the Getting Ahead Program, and it taught you about, you know, making smart goals. Uh, budgeting, knowing how to speak effectively. When I got here, there was this, they were offering this um, uh, photography class that you could take. I've just seen, been seeing everything in black and white for so long. It brings out, like, my creative side that, like, I lost touch with. And you get a better understanding of all the things that I can't say that, who, you know, what I am and who I am. We have found folks working amazingly hard to learn how to think differently and then act differently. Change is possible. Today we had the Dartmouth basketball team here. They did gingerbread houses, which was incredible. The kids loved them. There's a lot of stress that comes along with um, poverty and homelessness, and so when they come here, it's just time for them to just be a kid. Just as the Haven welcomes those who are in need, the Haven really welcomes anyone who wants to give. Volunteers are essential to every program that we have at the Haven. They run the food shelf, they work in the clothing room, in the healthy eating program, the after school program. They prepare dinners here every night, transportation and picking up food and delivering things, changing light bulbs, painting, maintenance things around the building. I actually came and I stayed here in the family shelter for a little while. Then and even now I came back because I just wanted to give back. They did a lot for me. There is a huge gap. Wherever there is a heart, there's a way to bridge that gap. Well, I like to think that all of my volunteer work is about serving others. More often than not, it's about feeding my own soul. I love seeing people happy. Um, we're donating stuff to the Haven. Instead of Christmas gifts. Instead of Christmas gifts. I think time is a very valuable tool. There's a group of students who all meet in front of Tucker and they go over to the Haven and they cook the meal with them. I volunteer here on Tuesday afternoons and today they needed some Christmas decorating done. We really get a sense of community up here, that people really care about how other people are doing. I like to think that I can have meaning in my life by helping people in their lives. They're giving me an opportunity to express my goodness. They're saving my soul. So much money taken out of our check each week, and we give it to the Haven. Well, one of our top events is our, our just our second annual golf tournament this year. That's been a, a great success. Each of you has 140 people standing behind you who you have helped today. If you live too far away from the Haven, then become involved in something in your own community. If you live close by, come and see what happens here and see if maybe you don't fit in. You're going to walk away with a whole lot more than what you came in with. Always looking to see for outcomes of what we do, are there better ways to do them? Um, more effective ways for the people that we serve. The Haven is effective. The Haven is careful with their funds. The Haven is generous. To have Sarah at the helm 
of this organization. I don't know anyone who could do what Sarah's doing. Always with love and honesty at the bottom of everything. The only way that you're going to help people make a change is by showing them that they're worth something. What we have found that is universal for people is that they want to be respected and they want to be accepted simply as worthy human beings. If you don't feel good about yourself and you're not proud of what you become, then you won't be able to move forward. Well, since I've been at the Haven, um, I have been on three interviews. I can make some type of decision of where I need to go career-wise. My, my whole goal now is to, is to be as helpful. So I go up to the uh, Hang Haven there, and they, you know, I, I like to just sit there in the background and play the guitar very softly, and it, 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 uh, that, that definitely gives me a lift. Yeah, the honky-tonk blue. Yeah, the honky-tonk blue. Oh, Lord, I've got a... And the thing is, everybody has skull, 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 um, uh, skull in their closet, but that's not what counts, it's what you're trying to do. Her dreams, you know, are to be a singer, to be an actress. With her talent, I think that she could probably accomplish it. Life is about dreams, and you gotta, you know, it's just what it's about. Like, everyone has a right to do whatever they want to and accomplish anything, and that everyone's beautiful in their own way. And no one can say that you're not, because you are.